Well, good morning. It's the appointed time for the November 15th meeting of the MAP3 Citizens Advisory Board. We'll call the meeting to order and uh, call your attention in your packet to the minutes, copies of which have been furnished to you. They're the minutes of the October 25th previous meeting of ours. Are there additions or corrections to the minutes? It has been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. The minutes have been approved. That brings us to item three on our agenda, which is a resolution approving a contract for engineering services with Johnson and Associates for the river project. David, you're going to brief us on that? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is recommend resolution approving a contract for engineering services with Johnson Associates Incorporated for MAPS 3 River, Oklahoma River Phase 2 improvements, fee of $526,318, and assigning tester and laboratories. It's project M3-R005. This is phase two of the river projects, and uh, phase two <clears throat> includes some uh, additional race course items like the, the buoy markers, the, the starting line. There's some judging platforms that'll be in there. There's uh, scoreboards, there's cameras. So it's a lot of ancillary stuff for the race course and, and for the, the area down there. <clears throat> um, as you may know, the river was going to be lowered in January for some other work. So this, this project will be bid in two packages, an, an early package that would take advantage of that river lowering. And then there'll be a second package after that that will include the rest of the items. So as I said, two bid packages. It also in includes site observation. The engineer will be on site to observe and report on construction. So there's 20 hours a week for 90 days, and there's 20 hours per week for another 100 20 days for this contract. Any questions? Uh, in Dee's absence, I will just say that uh, I attended the uh, River Subcommittee, and it comes with their recommendation that we that we approve this resolution. Is that right, David? Yes, sir. Any any questions? So moved. It's been Second. Moved, been moved and seconded that we approve this resolution. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is approved. Thank you. Uh, that moves us to item number four on the agenda, which is a resolution approving a change order. Uh, David? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is recommend resolution approving change order number one for MAPS 3 Oklahoma River race course lighting improvements, Oklahoma River, increase of $67,952, project M3-R002. This is some items that, that came up during construction, as, as they often do. The majority of this is because OG&E is providing electric service for an entire course, and, and we only had money to do partial course. So there's some things that need to be done, like uh, some clearing, things like that, in order to, to give OG&E access and allow them to put in the service for the entire thing. Also notice that there's a credit on this change order. There was a change in what they call a service point, which is essentially a transformer. So because of coordination with the uh, Whitewater facility, some things were moved and we we're actually able to combine a service point. Any questions? I think Michael Adams asked at the uh, subcommittee meeting whether or not this increases the overall budget or is just an increase in this particular contract, and that's all it is. It does not increase the overall budget. Is that right? It, this is still within the, the budget of this phase of the river project. Further discussion? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we, that we adopt the resolution for change order number one. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It's uh, unanimously adopted. Uh, item five is another resolution. Uh, re relating to uh, a memorandum of understanding with the Boathouse Foundation. David? Uh, item 5 is recommend resolution approving memorandum of understanding and agreement between the City of Oklahoma City and the Oklahoma City Boathouse Foundation for management, maintenance, and operation of the MAPS 3 Oklahoma River race course starting systems and related to pertinences. Uh, the MAPS program is providing a lot of equipment down there, and, and that's what we do is we provide the equipment. We don't operate it. 
um, we need a, a vehicle for the Boathouse Foundation to provide insurance and security and, and to manage the things that we're given, giving them, um, or giving the, the area down there in the river. There's an agreement ongoing between the River Trust and, and the city, but that's not yet approved. So we thought it was best that we get a memorandum of understanding that'll go on to council that spells out who takes care of what and, and who's got what responsibilities for these items as we give them to them. So this MOU just addresses the starting gates that we've provided them down there so that the Boathouse Foundation can provide insurance and that they know that it's theirs to take care of and, and to operate and, and to store. Uh, I fully expect that as we go along, when we finish the, the lighting, this MOU will come back at, as an amendment and we'll continue to add things as, as we give them the, the equipment and things until we get that, that full agreement in place. So let me ask this. Uh... Once the agreement with the city is, is uh, completed, will these amendments or memorandums of agreement, will they go away? They'll essentially be incorporated into that agreement, okay. but it will take care of it. Okay. And, and under this uh, memorandum of understanding, will we receive updates from the Boathouse Foundation on things going in along the river project that coincide with the MAPS 3? Uh, we, we could receive that from them, but not as part of the MOU. This is really just a, an understanding that the, the MAPS program is providing these starting gates and you're to, to operate them and use them and insure them and store them and take care of them. So it does include the insurance as well? Yes. Kim, they, I, I think there needs to be some legal understanding about who, who has the insurable interest, who, who, who can buy the insurance for this, and it's the responsibility of the Boathouse Foundation. And uh, I, I would just add, to, the, to your first question, uh, there are members of the Boathouse Foundation who serve on the subcommittee, on the on the uh, on the river subcommittee, and so there is uh, dialogue and interaction, and there is constant reporting about those items that goes on at the river subcommittee from from some members of the Boathouse Foundation who are members of both. Are there other questions? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the memorandum of understanding resolution. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, <coughs> no. Uh, it is approved. Item six, David. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item six is recommend resolution approving contract for architectural services with GSB Incorporated. For MAPS 3 Senior Health and Wellness Center number 1, fee of $28,933, the Sign Testing Laboratories Project M3-H002. <clears throat> Whenever we did the interviews for the architectural services for the first wellness center, GSB brought in a subconsultant that was specifically a subconsultant that dealt with senior issues and, and senior wellness. As the subcommittee went along, we realized that they could really be an asset to us as, as we prepare the uh, RFP for the operating partner. So the subcommittee asked that we bring these guys on board now to help us with that RFP process. So what we essentially have will be a, a two-part contract here. GSB has not been fully engaged to do the architectural design, but we're engaging them so that we can bring their subconsultant in to help us. Mr. Dover might have more to add. Michael? <clears throat> David said it well. Uh, I know that you didn't have a quorum, so we don't have a, an official recommendation, but is there any reason that the uh, subcommittee would not want us to go forward with this today? I think that, uh, Tom, I think that um, census is that we're so excited that we got finally got the consultants on board. Um, and so the short answer is, uh, officially, we couldn't have that recommendation because for the first time, we didn't have a quorum yesterday. I have a question. <clears throat> question. Um, when will the new RFP go out? Do you have any feel for that at all, Mike? 
Councilman, we expect, um, if things go as, as we hope, that we will finalize the RFP at our December meeting. Good. Uh, Thank you, Mike. And, and when it goes out, David could be more, of course, be able to answer that, assuming we finalize it at the December meeting. I, I think right after the first of the year, you'll be seeing the new RFP. Okay. All right. This is an action item for us. Is there, uh, would you approve this? So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded that we uh, approve this contract for architectural services with GSP. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It is unanimously adopted. Uh, any, any comments, David, under uh, item seven? No, sir, Mr. Chairman, we do not have anything else. Uh, David, at some point, uh, on the agenda, and I, you, you pick the time, but I, I would be anxious for you to give us a, a brief report on the joint meeting of all the consultants that occurred that you've given at some of the subcommittee meetings. I guess we could do this when? I could give you a quick summary right now. That would be if, great if, if you would. I, interested. I, I know that you've explained this to some of the subcommittees, but not everyone has gotten to hear that. Right. Um, we had a, a joint meeting with the, the consultants with the, uh, the streetcar convention center in the park, also including the uh, urban renewal consultants for their development uh, project, and then also the boulevard consultant. Joint meeting, we had over 40 consultants there. Um, everybody thought it was, it was a, a great meeting that we got together and everybody could see what everybody else was doing. This is one of probably many meetings that we'll have, as, as I described to them each we didn't expect that uh, that we would solve all our problems that day. It was really just an introduction and, and to get started. But uh, the consultants all thought it was great. Um, it was very informative. We went for more than four hours that day. We had consultants from all across the country, you know, from San Francisco and, and from uh, Massachusetts and Kansas City and Austin. And so we, we had everybody fly in. Um, I think the, the biggest thing was that they were all really appreciative that we told them they could call each other and, and talk on their own and, and work through their issues and, and we weren't going to hold them back that they could they could do those things. They just needed to tell us what was discussed. So it was it was a very good meeting. Any questions for David about that? Uh Kim? I just have a comment that again, you know, we we've set another precedent in Oklahoma City that I think adds to the Oklahoma standard that we hear a lot about. Well, I had one of the consultants tell me that he never had anything like this happen before. They had a meeting of all the consultants on a project and then be given the, the uh, permission to talk to each other. And that's what we need to have them talk to each other. That's an important part of it. Without having to try to coordinate all that, it took, I think, a lot of the uh, issues out of David's plate. Well, David, uh, congratulations. I think that was a great idea and to uh, Mike and ADG and all, all of the people who have helped get these consultants together and get that line of communication open. I think that's a real step in the right direction for all of the projects. So very good. Uh, item eight, the uh, subcommittee reports. Uh, I know that not every subcommittee met this month, and we've seen the action items from several. But uh, Kim, do you want to uh, uh, bring us up to speed on the park? Certainly. Um, yesterday, we did not reach a quorum at our meeting yesterday, although it was very highly attended by many city offices and, and public as well. Um, we certainly celebrated the fact that we had another great uh, second public meeting uh, when Hargraves was here last. Um, and as the result of many of the comments that were received by the citizens, we began decisions kind of thinking outside of the park, if you will, in the same spirit of communication outside of the park project and where it all inputs, um, beginning to look at how the park uh, enacts with uh, the south part uh, enacts with the, the river itself, and then also looking at other parks in the area, uh, Wiley Post and Wheeler, and um, also talking about how Hargraves is working with our city's parks department on how those parks will all integrate so that we have cohesiveness and fluidity and we're not duplicating efforts. So those discussions began, will continue, and we're very excited. Great. 
Any questions for Kim? Uh, Zane, the transit uh, committee, subcommittee met. Uh, we met yesterday, but we had some very light conversations about the proposed project plan that uh, ADG will be presenting and believe that we'll have action on that for next month to be presented to the uh, advisory board sometime in January. Great. Uh, the River Subcommittee did meet, as you can see from all the action items, uh, but nothing else to add there. Uh, the Fair Subcommittee, Bob Nealon's committee, did not meet. Uh, Susan, anything you want to tell us about trails and sidewalks? Just that the City Council did approve the um, resolution that we brought forth. So we did not meet, but City Council did approve the project. Great. Uh, the Convention Center Subcommittee did not meet. The contract with uh, Populous has gone forward. And that's uh, that's uh, a work in progress. David, anything you want to add about any of the uh, subcommittees that we might have overlooked? Okay. Uh, that brings us up to item nine, uh, the uh, uh, status of our uh, acquisition for the park property. You have in your packet an uh, updated map. and. Uh, you can see that there's just two parcels left to acquire for the park, and those parcels have gone into condemnation. So hopefully we'll, we'll have those in the coming months, and we'll have all the, all the land for the park, and Kim can have her party. <laughs> David, this may be an Amanda question, but uh, do we understand that once they go into condemnation, there's an appraisal, and if the if the city puts up the money, then we get possession of the property, so it, it does not delay the project. Is Can you kind of brief us on that, Amanda? Sure. When uh, the city of Oklahoma City files a condemnation case, uh, three commissioners get appointed. Uh, they're selected by the two parties. They agree upon those commissioners. The commissioners go out and do an appraisal. That becomes the commissioner's award. The city of Oklahoma City then can decide to deposit those funds into the court's um, account. At that point in time, the city of Oklahoma City takes possession of the property. We can move forward with our project. We still have some matters that could be litigated concerning the cost, um, but so long as there's no other challenge to the, the commissioner's award and the, and the fact that the city has a legitimate public purpose for taking the property, the city does obtain possession at the time that they submit the, the payment to the court. So in this situation with V3 and V4, um, we are working to agree on the commissioners. Um, there's been a little bit of more discussion on these commissioners than there had been on past cases because some parties have been proposed that haven't been used in the past. So we're working towards coming to an agreement on the commissioners. Generally speaking, once commissioners are appointed, it's about 60 days before we get their report back. Thank you. Any questions for Amanda? Zane, do you have a question? I, I do. Um, when will the city begin dem uh, demolition on structures that are in that area, or is that part of MAPS 3 and will we pay for that? <clears throat> uh, yes, um, that's part of Hargrave's contract is to recommend structures that will and will not stay, and as we go along, we'll be getting that recommendation. I think in the next 30 to 60 days, we'll be looking at, at starting demolition of some of those, and, and we'll progress. So. This, this winter, this spring, is the time when you'll see that demolition. And that does come out of the park's budget. David, one last question. And then this, this will, when, when that's done, this map is all dark blue, we will have the property acquired for the upper park. And then what's right. the, what, remind us of the schedule for the, the beginning of the acquisition of the lower park. We're, we're allowed to acquire property in the lower park if the, the property owners approach us. Yes. But we will not approach the property owners until 2014 for the lower park. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, that brings us in to David to item 10. Do you have anything you want to add uh, under that topic? Uh, I can, Mr. Chairman. I have a, a few things just to add um, as far as the river. Race course lighting is, is under construction. Windscreen is in design. The white water facility is also in design. And uh, 
the phase two contract which you approved today will, will soon begin so you can see there's a lot going on at the river senior wellness work continues on the rfp as we discussed for the operating partner trails and sidewalks as as miss hooper mentioned the master plan was approved by city council so design has begun for phase one of the sidewalks also we have two sections of the river trails in design and right away acquisition has begun for those trails projects also um, as you mentioned on the convention center conceptual design has begun and land acquisition continues fairgrounds has construction going on um, phase one what we call 1a the the initial grading for phase one has begun out there which is the the grading for where the racetrack used to be um, selection of the architect for phase two which is the exposition center is tomorrow so we'll be uh, choosing a, an architect for that exposition center tomorrow wow. transit purchase of the, the santa fe station for the intermodal hub is still underway and for the park as we just discussed land acquisition continues design of the master plan continues we've held two public meetings already and many focus groups there'll be a third public meeting and that, that meeting is being moved to january so if, if anybody wants to uh, have some more input on the park you'll have an opportunity in january did you mention that uh, hargraves will be here for the december meeting of the park right hargraves will be here to uh, work with the subcommittee in december all right any questions for david um, then that brings us to item 11. Uh, are there any other comments by the board uh, from any of the staff? Then that brings us to an opportunity for any citizens who are here that would like to uh, address the advisory board. Any citizens? If not, uh, I believe that concludes our agenda. Second. Been moved and second that we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you.